All right. Huge guest coming on. Huge guest. Again, not to belittle the other guests, but some of them have really been not much. This is huge. <laughs> huge guest. But before I bring him in, a quick rant about my present position at age 49. I just realized that I forgot I remembered, which is now a new thing. Because my son left early in the morning and I gave him 500 bucks and I spent the whole night thinking, remember to give him money for cab because the idiot never takes money and then calls from somewhere with all kinds of problems. And I gave him the money and then after one hour, I forgot whether I gave him the money and I kept calling him and he wouldn't answer the phone and I panicked that he hadn't taken the money. Uh, you know, why is this happening? How can this happen to someone that you forget you remember? This is horrible. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Atish is here. Atish Tasir, no less. Uh, liberation of the world uh, is at his doorstep. And uh, let's just say that uh, his political views are very close to our own. So lovely to have him here. Um, Strange though, apparently the OCI was rejected by our, our government. Is, is that correct? It wasn't rejected. It was taken away. Well, like you've been a naughty boy, say in the corner, give me your certificate. I mean, pretty much and followed by blacklisting and, and, and a very clear message from the Indian government to say like, no protests, no articles, and maybe we'll let you back in. You know, it's, it's not, not they're ver- they're, they're, we can be confused about where we stand. They're very clear. Right. So we are a democracy, just to, just to put it out there. And uh, this is part of neo-democratic politics, where you uh, stop dissent of any kind, and rightly so. Uh, no pun intended when I say rightly so. Um, but I just want to know, uh, uh, on the face of it, is it because your dad was Pakistani? Or is that the reason given? And isn't Look, that a racist sort of reason? No, th- th- in that, they're absolutely right. My father was Pakistani, but... Uh, You know, I didn't meet my father till I was 21 years old. I grew up in India with my Indian mother. And as far as we were concerned, we like that was how we applied for the PIO and and everything thereafter. And, you know, I've met my father about half a dozen times in my entire life. And this was very clear to the Indian government. And it was something that I wrote about. It was something that I was very vocal about. There was never any confusion. Ram Madhav, the BJP, like read Stranger to History back and forth and loved it and couldn't couldn't have been more like sort of supportive. What do you say? And, and it, I promise you, and it wasn't till that moment with the Time magazine cover and the election, and suddenly it was like, no, I'm very sorry, you're Pakistani. And not only are we going to do this, we're going to take away your right to be in India, but we're also going to blacklist you. So you can't even come as a normal tourist with a tourist visa. So it's, it's serious. You know, my mother's 70. You've seen what this year has been like with COVID and stuff like that. If I had an OCI, I would be able to come and see her. But like, I, I, actually, I have to wait till she's able to come here. And when people are older, these things become very, very dicey. Yeah, but it's, it sounds ridiculous because if you say you met your dad six times and uh, Pakistan is the whole you know, problem with everything in terms of the Indian government's way of looking at things. The strange part is, uh, what about cricketers who have toured Pakistan three or four times and they should also revoke their citizenship because they've sort of you know, been there about the same amount of times, probably spent more time on Pakistani soil, eaten more I mean, Pakistani food, certainly- interacted with more Pakistani people. <laughs> Certainly, like I remember, like with being on on with with Barkha and saying, like I was like, I think you've been to Pakistan more times than I have. Exactly, and certainly voiced more affection for Pakistan than I have. And she's on the list, though, from what I gather. <laughs> <laughs> there are two or three lists. Uh, hopefully, we're so small, nobody makes it. Uh, in fact, we're waiting to be on the list just so that we can be a somebody one day. Well, the nice thing with these guys is that no one is ever too small. Whether you're Munawar Farooqi or yeah. whether you're, or you're whoever it is, they, 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 they follow, every, they find everyone, every little Facebook right. post. Every, the, no, 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 one, no one is too small to be ignored by this government. <laughs> why, why is it that we don't have a better sense of humor about everything, especially for people in power? I have a theory it's more the psycho fans than the actual people. We have this chamcha giri, chela giri sort of uh, business that goes on, and they try but, to please the master. Sorry. But, but, but Cyrus, that's the, at the heart of the fascist enterprise is the lack of a sense of humor. So when the English were taking on Hitler, what the, one of the really fun, all, what they always thought was on their side was laughter. Hitler, he's only got one ball. Big ball. Hitler, Hitler a... had two, but very small. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, that yeah. was that was not just a joke. They that was a calculated strategy yeah, yeah. because that, because fascists, biting satire fasc- in <laughs> fascists hate laughter. Yeah, is that yeah. true? 
Wow, yeah, that's fabulous. So you don't have a sense of humor. The chances of you being more right wing than the next guy go up immediately. Human humanlessness for sure. I mean, and and you see it with the Wahhabis too. They hate that. Like the minute that kind of laughter that's irreverent kicks up, they feel more threatened than almost by anything else. I would say. Wow. So it's worse being a stand-up comedian in, um, let's say, a Wahhabi area of the world than it is a, a farmer in India right now. Is what Don't you feel the heat? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, just out there, I'm not laughing at Atish's reference. I have a lot of love and respect for all the good work being done in terms of bridges and coastal roads and the fact that people who spit may one out of a million be caught and given a fine. So there's all, all good things to look at. Atish, let's talk about you quickly because then we'll get into philo philosophical uh, banter sure. and I'm sure that will have no end to it. And without alcohol, that is wrong. Um, everybody knows who you are. Your writing speaks for itself. But th there's this one book called Freedom, is it? Uh, a collection of writers from India? Yes, this is a, a book that's a compilation. It's, it's, it's called Our Freedoms and it's published by Jagannath by Chiki Sarkar. And it's a number oh, of... Chiki. Very yeah. classy lady. Yeah. Very sorry, class. Sorry. Just want to show class. off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> typical, typical, I'm a typical Indian guy. You know, name dropping is all part of the I, I was hoping you'd go with the single name. That's, you know that's, you, that's that's not an Indian disease. Is it? Okay, as, as, a, as, a, as a friend of mine always goes, she's like, what 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 was that? Was that did I just see a name for? <laughs> yeah. No, no, I love the the ones who do it best, take the first name. You know, like, and everyone is not Elvis who's named by the, you know, the first name is enough, but they will just oh, yeah. say, you know, so, oh, uh, so you know Rahul. Right, Rahul right, right, right. You know, it's right, like that. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, I just yeah, love no. that, that first name familiarity. Yeah, no. Sorry, sorry. Chiki Sarkar came and. And so she's done this. Um, it's a kind of compilation of different Indian writers writing on the same theme, which is, and it's called Our Freedoms. Uh, and and that's that's basically what's happening right now. Okay. And uh, that's compilation, but is there anything coming out now? Because you spent one year in lockdown. I think the last book was 2020. Yeah, I'm writing erotic fiction. <laughs> to be safe? <laughs> or will that be banned as well? <laughs> well, you don't know, you know, but I thought, I th I thought I'd try a different line. Yeah, why not? Why not? But clearly, sex... clearly, clearly the political thing hasn't worked out for me. So in the old days, sex was the political scandal in a sense. Now right. your political viewpoint is like sex. Uh, for the conservatives. <laughs> yeah, wow. That's, but uh, uh, so isn't it odd that you're celebrated in certain parts of the world and then you have to watch your footprint in any other part of the world? Do you, are you, are you always like watching your back because of that and you have to, the trolls out there and people, you know, because you, you're going to get lots of love and lots of hate all the time, it seems. Yeah, not that much love. <laughs> Let me say. I think you know, it's for, in, the, in, for the enlightened. It, it, <laughs> the enlightened, you know, it's like civil society in Pakistan. You can have them all to dinner at one in one evening. You know, so it's it's a little bit like wow. the love is. <laughs> you know, now you're going to be welcome back to India for the Pakistan bashing. <laughs> no, but it's true. The the love is it's it's nice to have a little bit of it, but when you bring out the sort of legions that we're capable of in India. Like it's, it's definitely like, I would say hate is about here and love is like right down there. But yeah, thank you for saying that anyway. No, I, I think it's, uh, let, let me just praise you for a second. I know you wouldn't like that and probably uh, put the camera off for a minute. But the fact of the matter is you walk the walk, you talk the talk. Most of us, we like to go there, but then we back off at the right time because, you know, for logistical reasons. And the, just the fact that our, at the end of the day, you know, you don't put your money where your mouth is in terms of philosophy or conviction, etc. But you're one of those few people who just does. So that, that takes a certain strength. It may be because of your upbringing. It may also be... I just think that some people can do that. They have that spiritual quality about them where they can just take on things. Uh, like you say, with a sense of humor, some people can't. And you are one of those people. Well, that, that's, that's, that's very nice of you to say. Thank you, firstly. And uh, oh, we're, I, we're, I mean, we're like I coming on to each other. <laughs> I, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's... I, I, I think that it's true in one respect, which is that a, a very, very early lesson for me about what it took to be a writer was this idea that writers don't lie. Like, I, 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 it's somehow like I had a very close relationship with V.S. Naipaul. And one of the things that I admired most about him was that he was completely, supremely indifferent to being liked, you know? And I thought that's actually, it's a very difficult thing. You know, all our conversations are based on some degree of lying, whether it's, but with him, it was, it was zero. It, so everything was an absolute base level of truth. And I don't know if I was able to inculcate that fully, but I thought like, God, one should really try on that. That should be the benchmark. And, and I think that, that, that that's, yeah. 
uh, now that you mentioned him, do you, do you think, uh, I mean, this is a very simplistic question, but since the gossips of the world, I'm interested in that. Do you think he was like, in a sense, anti-Indian, anti well, our skin color and our subcontinental type? He... No, I mean, I, well, it's, it's so complicated because in a funny way, he's the hero of the Hindu right. So in many ways, he was not like, he, he was, he w- had a huge, in a very unsentimental heart, he had a huge reserve of like love and affection for India. And in fact, it almost, it messed him up a lot. Like in other places he could look very clearly, but in India, it would almost interfere with his clarity was this affection for India. And it led him to think that, you know, that the BJP would be good for India. And I think if he saw it now, and especially if he saw sort of the possibility of like someone like Yogi Adityanath ascending in India, he would be horrified. But uh, so India was almost a blind spot because he loved it so much. Now that you mentioned Indian politics, it's clear, obviously, the right is not your favorite, but does that mean you favor the Congress or because? No, No, I've always been, I've always been, my, my work hasn't really been about the Hindu right. It's always been a critique of the way that we lived in India, you know, and it's not about Congress, but that world of the English speaking Indian and the, the situation to power. You sound like Arnob. Be careful. No, but I mean, you I can promise you, bring them down. It, those, those were my, the, I, because I saw that world and I, and, and you are coming from that from, world. Yeah, well, I am from that world. And also I had this extra experience with Pakistan. And I, I thought, you, if you see this situation, you know that it can't survive. I mean, they talk in this country, in the United States, about an imbalance between the elites and the heartland and all of that stuff. In India, it was completely off the charts. And so I, 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 I sensed that some sort of revolution was going to come. But it's not necessarily the case. In fact, it's very rarely the case that a bad situation is replaced by something better. Sometimes it can be replaced by something worse. And especially when there's... It's so cynical. I'm scared now. <laughs> so what are you saying? These are good times. These could be good times. But, but well, exactly. In terms of disease as well, there might be a worse virus out there. Right. Well, wait till the chief minister of Uttar Pradesh becomes our prime minister. It's true. No, I mean... It, it, fashion will change. <laughs> Do you have one? Ooh, a, a, a gown? <laughs> I do for stage. In Fushia. I, I may have to come and live with you in New York. I, I hope that I hope that painting is valuable because I eat a lot. I, it's a it's a Salman tour. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. All, always uh, sophistication. See the look is Delhi background. You can't escape that. So, it's almost like cannibalism, isn't it? From one point of view. But uh, coming back, so. Where do you think we stand in the world now, uh, before I let the others in, in terms of, we've got Joseph Biden Jr. Firstly, why is he junior at age 96? But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> makes no sense. But everybody thinks that that's going to happen. Trump disappears and the world starts, the right wing the right wing movement becomes less, which was happening uh, across Europe and other places as well, uh, as well as here. So do you think that that's a symbolic change or we're just expecting too much? Look, If you think of the fact that whatever this energy is that's like ranging through the world, that's like throwing up Bolsonaro's and Erdogan's and Modi's and all of this stuff and Trump, if you think of this energy as like some kind of global phenomenon, part of a global experience and a reaction to that experience, the fact that in this country, which whatever you say about it has been a kind of beacon of democracy, the fact that it came here and that the system held and that this energy was in some ways like defeated and there was another sort of response in the figure of Joe Biden that the press held, that the judiciary held, that those things, I feel like the symbolic power of that, of reckoning with this thing and at the same time not being completely defeated by it, I think that it will have a huge effect because, you know, in the past, we thought, oh, these are our problems. These, you know, we don't see the kind of scenes that, but when on January 6th, the world looked at America in the figure of Trump, the world looked at America and they thought like, you're not that different. You know, you yeah. have some of the similar. And so for, for America to contend with this and to move past it, I think will have a huge, 
atmospheric effect on the world. It, 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 it's not to say that like suddenly, you know, we're going to wake up in some kind of utopia, but absolutely the, this is like the crucible of certain kinds of democratic concerns, democratic fights. And the fact that that fight has been, is moving into a new act and is, is, is going to matter. Sorry, uh, Atish, what, what all, the, all your comedians do back home in America? 75% of the material was Donald Trump. Uh, Biden even oh, won one, one or two it's jokes. Not and... it's, it's not just comedians, intellectuals, journalists. I mean, the, <laughs> whole, lot, lot, the whole lot of us. I mean, yeah. everyone's, everyone's really on out of some... work in terms of material. Oh, oh God. Perhaps. A vacuum <laughs> has been created. Yeah. Let's just come back to India for a second because I, I just want to understand. I just think this the other viewpoint many people feel because bjp at least is powerful and cohesive to some extent and strong that we have some sort of control and some sort of discipline in the country if that was to go and we have this amalgamation of different parties coming together in a hung parliament what have you uh, that might really be difficult for us to hold the entire fabric of society that binds us so in a sense do you think what you said earlier about worse things could come um, if there was no one powerful entity in a country like this well, the, the problem right now has been the fact that like that the political system in, normally in a democracy, it should be, there should be a kind of creative tension between the two sides. So fine, the BJP wins, let's say after that first defeat, a lot of parties, the Tory party, the Republican party, big, big famous parties from 200 years histories, they go away, they nurse their wounds, and then they respond. They don't come back with the same thing. They don't say, oh, by the way, we have an idea. Here's Hillary Clinton again. Oh, you by the way, we have an idea. Them. Yeah, yeah you, you move, you change. And the, the stasis on the other side is a big problem for us. I feel like, like the, the, that creative engagement with the triumph of the BJP either hasn't been allowed to happen or like the channels are blocked. You know, that, that, that maybe it is happening on the street in India. Because one of the things that I saw, I've been feeling for a while is that these protests that we're seeing, yes, they have something to do with policy. Yes, they have some. But what I'm feeling is much, much more like a deeper abstract sense of disappointment coming up in the form of protest again and again. And that to me is like basically the political system is not able to absorb what's happening on the street. You think the so resentment it, runs deep and we are only seeing the surface of one thing, which is well, not exposing the actual truth of the holistic nature of uh, whatever anger that we have. Right. Normally this anger gets channeled into the political system and you throw up somebody and you like have a leader and you have, you have people winning. You, all of those, things, those channels should be Got unblocked it, and that, but you have, the figure of Rahul Gandhi, a static figure. You can't fire through that way. So hence we take to the streets. Right. It's spilling out into the streets. So so I that so it's it's quite complicated what's going on. But I think that that yeah, it's 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 not working. Uh, Atish, I, I sorry to interrupt. I do get your point. You're pointedly asking me here and now to make my case as a leader, to stand up for the oppressed and to <laughs> perhaps one wonderful. day be prime minister of a combination of four to five countries. You'd India would be wonderful. for my ego. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to look left, right, you know, outsource your PM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there I'm won't, there won't, you'd, you'd be like, you'd be like the old Cyrus, yeah. Cyrus the Great. The Great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a little more territory than me, that's for sure. Uh, okay, one last question, then we'll take a break and get the other guys in. Uh, Atish, who, how, how do I ask you without sounding rude, who are you? Because, or is that just a dead entity of who one is? Are you Indian? Are you Pakistani? Are you... A Canadian, British, are you, who, who are you, or does it not matter? No, it does matter, actually, like, and, and I've never, I've never had that problem. People, like, feel that, oh, Identity well, crisis. Yeah, it's never been a problem. Firstly, because on one side, if you look at it in a very simple way, my parents were both Punjabis, and there was, like, a very easy sense yeah. of being Punjabi, as, culturally, that was a very easy You sense. don't have to sell that, bro, and, I got and, that. Huh. And, 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 and more importantly, like I was deeply connected with India and will always continue to be, but I very much believe that it's like that whatever happens politically, that culturally it's a place that doesn't have room for me anymore. That isn't like a place where I could like live or feel welcome or be part Even of. Even with a change so, of government and uh, perhaps. Well, me... I just, you know, I'm, I'm just worried, Cyrus, that this thing that's been unleashed is so visceral 
that I I just don't know if like there's there's a world in which like I would ever be able to fit back in. And so, yes, I mean, I, I think of America as an adoptive home, as a place that I've had to come under certain situations. But it also means that like that that sort of India historically, culturally is kind of free to me now. Like it's it, I'm able to like have okay, it as sure. my, you know, yeah. this is an immigrant country. Everybody here has the American passport and they have a country that they came from. And that country for me will always be India. But uh, I don't feel that the Republic of India in this present moment is like, like quite apart from the fact that I can't physically go there. I don't think like on a cultural level that there's, 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 there's room for me there. And, and it's, 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 it, and maybe I'm wrong, but there's just, I feel, I feel an animosity that's like, that's more than anything I've ever felt before. And, 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 and beyond I, and, the government, you're saying that there's just enough. Yeah. It's, it's not, the, it's not the liberal people out there who the, the, the government, faci- the government facilitated it, but it's much, much deeper than that. Yeah. And, and, and oh, they wouldn't get, the you most. know, you, one doesn't want to sort of spoil one's life by trying to fit into a place that doesn't really want you, you know? So it's, 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 it's very clear to me that like, I'll live a, whatever life I can cobble together here. You're in New but, York. It's not so bad. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's wonderful, but this was not my plan. You know, I was, I, I went to college in America and I had a very clear direction. I was going back to India to be an Indian writer, to devote myself to Indian language, to Sanskrit, to all of these things. Like these, this, these were my concerns. Can't you write and, one pro government book for a, a couple of volumes and boom, and then go back to being who you are. That should, that should suffice. <laughs> It's not that simple. Well, I can recommend books from the from the past. You can just copy them, change a few words, <laughs> correct the English. There's a couple in German that come to mind. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that simple. Um, so yeah, this 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 change is is something, and 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 it may not like. I think Muslims are at the rough end of it, but as you as you sort of start to open it out, you find that sticks are at the rough end of it. That. English speaking Indians are at the rough end yeah, of it. Yeah. Probably Parsis are at the rough end of it. You know, like like it's it doesn't look like a world that 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 that, that inclusive we, enough. Well well that, that we always felt in the past that India hung together on the fact that there were all these components and they were locked together in this kind of harmony, in a disharmony. And suddenly that that idea of India doesn't really like nobody believes it anymore everyone believes in their heart of hearts hey uh, you know 80 percent Hindu it's a Hindu country like the rest everyone else can fuck off basically you know and I think I think that that that's that that in you can't fight that but you can argue you're 50 percent Hindu you can you can you can have two you know this is my thing this is my thing I think we, but the we, six are not Hindus now <laughs> okay but you know what I mean <laughs> no it's true all right, fair enough. Okay, let's not start another debate. Line us with them. All kinds of people will come after us. Uh, just one last thing, not to be insensitive, but could you come to Nepal and then just put your foot across into Indian border and sort of say hi to your friends? And, and not, not unless I wanted to lose my foot. Oh my God, it's that bad. <laughs> All right, big brothers watching you. Uh, we'll take a quick break. Lots more to talk about with Atish when we come back in a few seconds. We also have Silvery, young man from Pawai with strong liberal views and Amit Doshi. The man, well, he should be in parliament from all accounts in a minute. <laughs> all right. Okay, back again. Um, uh, Republic Day, big day for India and Australia. Just for a huge series, by the way. Uh, India one, two, one. Not to be jingoistic. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> can't stop myself. Uh, Amit has joined us. Uh, Atish is drinking away. I don't know what it is. We'll have to check. Just a little sparkling water. Is it? Only water ten thirty on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a little sparkling water and tequila. <laughs> <laughs> the loneliness of a writer during lockdown. Hey, do you guys get to party at all in New York? What's the situation now? It's not bad, you know. You can't, you can't be at a big party, but there are restaurants and there's like there's a little bit of life still. So you could go out and hang out with people. It's not like you have to be alone. You couldn't be in a big crowded room. For, for sure. That's not happening. Oh, is, is that because you're Indian and they're racist about it? Like, <laughs> no Indian here! <laughs> Although that, that, that's gone. We got a new guy now. You got the new guy. Right, right. Hopefully that's gone. Yeah. All right. Uh, Amit? Yes. I think she's all yours. Uh, uh, you know, so so uh, actually, I just wanted to uh, ask you, uh, like, you know, just based on the last little bit that you were talking about, right? 
uh, when you say you're you don't feel welcome in India, do you? Uh, what do you think changes that? Right, because I mean, like, I, I, the, if you if we think about how fast the world has flipped in some ways to the right, would yeah. it flip back in the other direction? Could it flip back that quickly? Like, I mean, like Brexit was not a thing that anybody would have considered ten years ago, right? Yeah, I but, mean, but these were in the, in the societies that we're talking about, whether it's the United States or England, the balance is far more equal. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about yeah. you're talking about a gap of a percent, basically, even in places like the South. Whereas whereas in India, I think it's about 80, 20, maybe. But it's, so is it 85, really the, 50, the I don't know. Is, that, is it true? Is that the way percent of the media? Oh, sorry? The BJP that, won like 35 percent of the vote. No, but I mean. Hitler won 35% of the vote. That's not, it's not the percent of the vote that con, uh, concerns me. It's, it's the, it's when you feel that, like, when you see the, the atmosphere as far as like, whether it's protests, whether it's, it's stuff like that. Like, I don't sense that Mr. Modi's hold on the Indian electorate has really been profoundly shaken yet. Mm -hmm. And, 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 I, and more than that, if it is shaken, I think it's, more to do with like certain like disappointments with policy on the cultural agenda i don't see an enormous pushback i don't see the kind of pushback that i saw here when trump was really sort of rattling the cage and you saw the press the judiciary you saw one after the other the institutions and ordinary people and people really who push... worked for him yeah people who work from all sorts of and and so you it, the I feel that that cultural fight that they, that the BJP has unleashed, that they've been sort of victorious, actually. But you take a figure like, I know these are arbit figures, but you're saying 80% uh, non-liberal India, the great country which allows for everybody to mix. We have no real oppressive tendencies on the outside, at least for all these years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do, you th do you think there's institutional change uh, or rather, do you think that the institutions in India that, so, I mean, like you, you're right, the pushback came from institutionally, uh, institutionally, right, in the US. Uh, do you think that that is, uh, that, that we don't have those at all over here? Like, I mean, like, I know they're not well, as strong. Well, I mean, the, I, 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 see, I see capitulation completely in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. I see capitulation completely, our uh, opposition as it used to be, has completely collapsed. I see incredible capitulation on the in the press, and so so I, I guess like one starts to look around and you think where is the pushback? And now like we saw the CAA protest, mm -hmm. we saw these farmers protest, and I think that this is this is disappointment because, you know, he hasn't delivered. Like Erdogan in the first years of the Erdogan regime, like Turkey was in flower. It was a period of economic prosperity, of growth, all of those things. That hasn't happened in India. So it's hard to know whether, whether the reaction is not just that kind of discontent or are they really making it? I don't know if there's any kind of symbolic statement against like Modi plans to change India in certain ways. Is India willing to defend that idea of India that we had, or was that so exalted an idea that it never really had roots? Or are we just psycho fans who just like powerful personalities and just like to bend over all the time? Maybe it's I, I have the feeling. I, I I I disagree with that to an extent, right? Because I think that uh, what you when you're talking about uh, some of these, uh, so the English speaking divide that you were speaking about, right? The, the, right. the absolute elite versus like, you know, the mass this, right? I mean, like that, 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 that I think plays into this to a great extent, right? Because I think uh, a lot of the uh, folks that you'd be looking at to kind of have these kinds of uh, pushbacks are pushing back. It is people who like are whom? Uh, dude, uh, from, from on, on the liberal side, you're not, uh, I mean, sorry, on the media side, uh, maybe it's just the people who I am reading. A few people on like the that. internet, bro. If you look at the actual media, mm -hmm. the actual media is either muzzled or towing the line. I mean, we're told also from time well, to time. So, I mean, like, is the internet not the actual media? I mean, like, well, uh, it's, 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 it's scattered. It's a scattered performance. So I think what he's saying is there's no big movement which you can see, which is fighting from both sides, opposing forces, almost equal, like in the West. And if that's right. not true, then we don't have a chance. Well, I don't know that that's the case, right? Because again, like, I, I don't think that you need such a mass medium. See, I mean, I mean, like, I'm trying to be a little optimistic here that change is 
possible and like you know because it's not a great situation the way it is right now right yeah. but uh, what are the things that can lead to that positive change right and i mean like how do we make it so that people uh that people are uh, comfortable well, right I'll, they- I'll, t- I'll tell you something one of the main reasons and and that i actually rather supported modi in 2014 mm-hmm. was that i thought if you bring economic prosperity in a serious way mm-hmm. if you if you bring enough people a, over the line, as let's say a country like China to some extent has, you create the conditions of a middle class that is by default going to eventually push back against you. Mm-hmm. But when you, when you create hope the way that he did in 2014 mm. and you don't deliver, you leave a massive amount of very young, angry men Correct. At the disposal of an ugly ideology, of an uh, ugly, that's the world in which bad ideas take hold. Mm -hmm. And people don't have enough, they're not, they don't have enough to lose to, to defend like a certain way of being, you know, it was, it was, it's, 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 it's in the creation of that kind of class Mm -hmm. that you know that Sorry. I, sorry, I just like to quickly note for the record that you uh, supported uh, Narendra Modi 2014. Dear BJP, please return OCI as you've proven that you gave your vote to. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't support. I didn't support that him allows... in this. I, I didn't support him in this unequivocal way. I really didn't. But I, 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 I had, I had, I had hopes of what he might do, and I a had fresh fears. wind, a fresh breeze. Yeah, and I was. I'm, I mean, I'm not going. I'm not going to like. Uh, I feel like. That I feel incredibly like wrong about that. I think of it as one of the great mistakes of my life. And and I, I and you know political situations are binaries. You vote either here or you vote there. And I mm. thought maybe something good would come of this. It didn't. And you know what can I say? While we at it, your predictions for two thousand and twenty-three. I, I have a, I have I, I I I'd love to play it for you. I have I have a if bet. We, uh, I have a bet that I made with my mother in 2017 and the bet had two clauses. One was I said Modi will come back with a bigger majority than he had in 2014. She's like, you're a fool. You don't know anything. And I said, the other thing that I fear more than anything is that his heir or successor will be Yogi Adityanath. And she said, you're bonkers. And so one part, one part, one part of that bet has already been won, and I feel very much that 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 um, that that will be put forward. As, I, I as, think as, if you uh, do, do, you not think that a figure like Yogi, uh, like Modi, at least has this patina of like you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm somewhat business friendly. I'm like Relatively you know, trying, more liberal than uh, uh, no, not opera. liberal, not liberal at all. But you know, I, I'm trying to inc- atmanirbhar. I'm trying to increase the, you know, uh, the the over uh, the economic situation. At least, at least he kind of like you know plays to that to a certain extent, right? Adityanath is just straight up like you know, I mean, like over there, that that's just like straight up Hindu supremacism, uh, supremacy, right? So I mean, like I I do I, I feel like uh, I I know a number of people who are BJP supporters right now, but uh, Yogi Adityanath would be a bridge too far for them. But then I who also knows? Feel right? At- Atish. Uh... Namo has a lot of people following him with a certain rock star image, whether you like it or not. But um, I don't know if that's pan India for Yogi. Mm. Well, let's see. It wasn't for you know for Modi yeah, for a long for time. Either. It correct, wasn't correct. either. Like that was developed very quickly and 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 it took hold. And uh, I just sense that there's like an underground, like uh, like a pop, like in every poll of chief ministers, he comes out like yards ahead and there's something about the way that he's been positioned the vigorousness the muscularity the dynamic, yeah, yeah there's yeah, something yeah. that's like that really frightens me about that man and that like I and he's feel... far more visible than most of the others you're absolutely yeah. right he's always in the news for some reason yeah. okay this is the most I, I... depressing podcast ever i need to drink <laughs> <laughs> bartender too please <laughs> uh, I... I remember a few episodes back, Amit had made this point, and I keep going back to thinking about that. It is that uh, who will be the successor? It can be one of two people who are so prominent right now, either the reporter or the yogi. And the reporter? Uh, like, no, no, the, the journalist or the he yogi. He can't be, he can't, he can't, no, not, no. He, he, can, is, he, playing, he is playing politics only, no? What else is he doing? He plays his role, but I don't see him. No, 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 he's politics. playing politics. When he came out, he, uh, when he came out of jail, he ran a, he had a rally. 
He told you so, Che Guevara for five minutes. Yeah, there. so, I, so are you, wait, 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 are you talking about Arnav? Yeah, we're the one and only, no, the, greatest, no, no, no. the greatest man ever. Yeah. Yeah. Being, a poli- no. being a politician in India is still a serious business. You yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, yeah. I don't know about that. I mean, like, I, I really, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the way that we look, uh, uh, Narendra Modi uh is in many ways a uh creation of uh or it's not a creation right i mean like he is who he is but at the same time there is a media savviness that has driven his entire thing right his entire his entire ability to kind of capture the imagination the way that he has been able to is driven by a media savviness right and i think that as we get uh atish's point is 2014 all that made sense that push was good the advertising was good the, the image makeover was good but how did he come back in 2019 if there was no deliverance in terms of prosperity, uh, you know, a shift commercially, or just people, just a happiness quotient not going up? But he still came back because he was still the rock star, right? I mean, like as you were saying, he is a rock star. That 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 he is the celebrity prime minister at this point, right? And I think that uh, I, I I you but know, you I mean, know like, he, he wasn't that 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 happened very quickly, and hmm. it wasn't it wasn't something that like there were there were there were moments in the lead up to the campaign where he, like in you could be in delhi and delhi is always the place if you ever want to get the wrong political idea <laughs> just go and spend some time in delhi because they'll always and 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 among intellectuals in delhi it was ludicrous because mm. he seemed a provincial politician he seemed like st- tainted in many ways Divisive. and yeah and and you had to really go out of delhi to feel that that uh, to feel what a kind of like cord he was touching yeah. with uh, people. Uh, uh, have you all seen the movie Idiocracy? Yes. No, I haven't. Uh, oh, L- Luke Wilson. Uh, uh, Luke Wilson, but uh, the uh, so. Uh, uh, the the guy from Brooklyn Nine Nine, the sergeant, he plays the president in that movie. Uh, yeah. He plays President Camacho. He is basically a pro wrestler president, fifty years in the future, right? And uh, the, you know, Teddy I mean, Cruz. Like, uh, uh, oh, Teddy Cruz. Teddy Cruz. Yeah. 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 Uh, so so I think like you know there there is kind of like you know uh, I I feel like that's what's happening to an extent, right? I mean like the figures that we're seeing who are becoming these kind of huge, uh, usually popular populist figures, right? Whether it Donald Trump, Narendra Modi, all of them seem to be kind of like, you know, moving like this. And it feels like Arnab is the kind of like, you know, natural progression from there. I mean, I don't, I don't agree with you. I think that, I think that in the end, like Indian politics is still very, very good. He plays his role. And you have to have political realities. You have to have like one of Rahul's biggest problems is that he doesn't have that relationship with the, with on the ground. Yeah. And you can't you can't be someone like Arnab and develop that relationship. He's like it doesn't. On, he's talking to them every day. Yeah, but he's talking yep. still to a very small section. Yes. Like the, to be a polit- politician in India, the way Yogi is or Modi is, you have an ability on the ground in the small kasbas and the small towns of Uttar Pradesh and Uttar mm-hmm. Pradesh and places like that. Like Arnab would never play like that. Like uh, he's 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 still also, he's still. He's happy being the kingmaker. Why would he change that? Because it's better to be the king than the kingmaker. Uh, I can't see him going to the pinnacle position, as Abhi <laughs> says. But should we yeah. get on with the AMAs, guys? Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, sure. one, yeah, one quick thing, though. One quick thing to Amit's point. I would kind of agree with Amit because I think that India has this thing about celebrities, right? Like we we pray to celebrities or we celebrate celebrities. Yeah, but we don't elect them. We don't elect them. But Amitabh Bachchan didn't become prime minister. In the South, Correct. maybe not prime minister, extent, but they did but... get into politics. All these. They, yeah, but you you win politics. you win an MP seat or something like that. You don't become prime minister. In fact, in a funny way, India is very serious like that. Like yeah, you and... you do have to be a real politician in a real way. Like you can't really be parachuted and, down. And then he's the head of the BJP. That seems yeah. odd. You know that he would jump over so many senior figures and become the PM. I don't think. Uh. Yeah. I think he's well, happy I think do. that's a problem that we just generally have around seniority and, and, and stuff like and, that. And right? that, that's that's by the way us discussing the fact that the BJP has a very very complex structure which is interlaced with the RSS, and it's not like you can't just come out as some sort of like television celebrity and become sort of take over like the, the structure of the BJP. It's a yes. much it's a much. The RSS different. is not known for wearing ties, and he has <laughs> he has that problem. So I, I think uh, I, I hope you're right, but I think that given the way that we're seeing institutional 
issues across all different kinds of institutions. Uh, I don't think political parties are going to be immune from that kind of thing. Uh, and I think that uh, expediency, if they feel, the party feels that there is going to be, uh, that, that Arna brings certain things to the table, or anybody else for that matter, brings certain things to the table, I think we'll start seeing that like expediency play out in that. In, in no, that but think of it this way, the advantages of Arnob. For one, uh, parliament will be replaced with panels, so less people, just five or six people at 10 people at a time. <laughs> I think that makes sense. Yeah, uh, And judgments will be delivered before. I think that you'll be very clear that the judgment is already delivered, and then we have the process of pretending to, you know, go through everything. But I, I hope Atish is right, and I hope that I mean, like, this is like an absolute. Atish pipe is dream. safe in New York. No, because if it's mo <laughs> if it is Yogi Adityanath, you know, I mean, like at that point in time, you know, we know this is one way or the other, right? Well, I mean, like yeah, that's uh, that, and, that there's and I think, clarity and I think there. That's actually a very important moment because you know, like, it may be in the offing. Like. I was, I was in Turkey recently and I, I'd been last in Turkey almost 20 years ago. And it's quite astonishing to see what was at that point still a very vibrant society have 20 years of that kind of leader. Mm -hmm. And it like you, if you're like a young person in India right now, you have to sort of make up your mind, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like, it's very difficult. It's difficult to begin again elsewhere. It's difficult to get out. It's mm -hmm. difficult to do any of these things. But I said to my mother, I said, if Yogi is a serious contender for prime minister, you have to leave. You know? <laughs> like, I was like, this is like that moment when, you know, it's 1979 in Iran and you like, you can't be a fool or it's 1939 in Germany. Like you can't be a fool. If it comes, if it, if that kind of person is in the offing, you have to do whatever it takes and get out. It, it brings clarity. And all three that you mentioned had strange fashion choices. Uh, no disrespect to the Ayatollah's <laughs> followers. But I, you know, I was like, why? Sometimes that question would hit you, being an outsider. So should I take a Hindu name for safety, Atish, after the cynical program? Sai Ram what, what, comes to mind. What, Sai what, Ram, it's sort of... Sai Ram, it would be go Sai. Oh, good, good for me. All right, and, your, and your fuchsia robes. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. I don't mind that. It, it's just that they stick to one color. And after, after some time, it looks there's no imagination. I think that's you have true. to mix it up a little bit. That would be fair. Uh, what do you think, Amit? Amit is um, perplexed. He doesn't want to spoil his serious well, no, mood. Sairam Brocha. Sairam Brocha is good, man. Sairam is good. The, Sairam, the phone, Sairam, it should all... be Sairam Bharucha, right? I mean, like... Uh, yeah, the Gujaratification. But that get, anyway you happen. Should, you should get the full list. So huh? if a non-English Anglophile person talks, they'll say Bharucha anyway. Yeah. So that's okay. <laughs> you can't, it's like Bombay, Mumbai, Mumbai, Bombay. The North Indians actually say Bombay, which is Bur beginning and Bai uh, second. If you actually know <laughs> when, you, when you take it in Hindi and other languages. But uh, it's very complex. If you want to discuss that, I had a philosophy where you name everything after numbers. So nobody's angry. There's no question of anything. It's just numbers. It's like sector 16, 22, 33. That's the way right, to go. Right, right. Madras is just four. <laughs> oh, why did you? We left the South alone throughout this conversation and you had to go on one blow, divide more people. All right. AMA is quickly, guys. We're running out of time. Atish has to sleep or uh, have a visitor over. It's a Saturday night and, and he's in America. They're allowed. I'm a, mar I'm a married man, for God's sake. You know? More reason to have one. <laughs> How liberal are you? <laughs> Sounding the right wing to me. I'm married. Uh, Stay with the wife. I'm just, a, I'm just a, a bourgeois conservative who fell apart of the BJP. Camera changes you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you voted, if you were sort of pro, even marginally pro uh, uh, PM Modi in 2014, the right to the OCI has to be given to you. Because you voted once. <laughs> it nullifies your not so good uh, image with them from say uh, 18, 19 onwards. Yeah, I think no. it's like one one all in football terms. <laughs> you can't back. I'll, I'll work on that. Well, I've already made a call. I'll, I'll, I'll have I'll have you go to to go and petition Ahmed Shah on my behalf. Sai Ram. <laughs> <laughs> my name my is Sai Ram. <laughs> <laughs> okay, AMA Silvery. Right. Yeah. Uh, this first one comes in from uh, Viral Podar. He asks. Uh, actually, we have two similar questions, so I'll just say both of them. Uh, this one, first one is by Viral Podar. He says, "Hi, Cyrus and guests. Uh, a very happy Republic Day to you and your team." As a, as a kid, I used to get up early in the morning every 26th January to watch the Republic Day Parade on TV. It used to be a whole event with the family. We used to have samosas, dahi vadas for breakfast. It used to be a great time to bond with parents and siblings. What about you guys? Did you all do... But, but there's a simple reason for that. There was no OTT. Okay? 
So you, you okay? I, I know this is bad. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes you know, choice is choice. Uh, for me, my problem with Republic Day, I have a slight problem with all our big days. Is that why is there no alcohol served when you're celebrating? I cannot understand this correlation, this yeah. disrespect. Because then, if you're di- finding it disrespectful, there should be no alcohol. But everywhere in every culture across the world, including some strong right-wing ones, they celebrate with drinks. It'd be like yeah. today is Thanksgiving or today is America Day or whatever, and they go berserk and you have more drunks in lockup. But here it's like no drinking, so it's almost like it's a punishment. So that effect on the young is really strange because they are oh it's a great day it's a holiday. This is, uh, India was a republic, we are you know, democratic people, and then oh but lassi. I mean I like lassi, <laughs> but you know how many five six at a wild party? No no. So we've got to redress that. That's one of the reasons why I haven't voted for anyone yet. My three, four points, including South Bombay parking and uh, this, have to be addressed. Also, women with fat arms wearing, uh, you know, gungies. What's with that? Why do they <laughs> do that? That's so mean. I can't pick on Yogi for his fashion when our own people in Valkeshwar do these things. Amit, please. <laughs> um, will somebody like to answer that question? <laughs> so I never liked. Uh... Parades, I find them boring. But Atish, you grew up in Delhi. Where did you go for the live ones or ever? No, or you... no. I, I kind of like had it going on in the background every every and I and I, I I was I was in the neighborhood, so it was a bit of a nuisance to some extent. But uh, <laughs> but it was. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, I'm all for it. You know, I yep. mean, I think it's it's uh, that stuff, especially in the old days. It's rousing. It makes you feel yes. kind of love mm-hmm. of country. <laughs> Sort of, yeah, I don't mind. I mean, I yeah. have no objections. <laughs> yeah, well, that and, and, and standing room. When you go to see these things, they should have more chairs because they're long functions. Mm-hmm. Indians can't do short functions. We never do like a 12 minute Joe Biden, I'm president, Trump's gone, good night, everybody go home. <laughs> For us, there'll be, there'll be item but, numbers. But now, now, that now that we're talking about Republic Day, I have to tell you a great story. Uh, so, my mother was, one, as a young reporter, met Jackie Kennedy who was the guest for Republic Day one, like this is 20 She had a political standing? Jackie Kennedy? No, she was there as like- she was married? I guess, just having been like a first lady or something like that. And she was the guest. And uh, my mother was like, oh no, it's terrible. All this, it's like a bunch of people in leotards doing calisthenics, like the Republic Day parade, like I pay no attention. And then just without thinking, like it's that kind of nervous thing, she said, the only reason I go, Mrs. Gandhi was prime minister, was she said, in case she gets shot. And suddenly she realized who she'd said it to. And my mother said like, like Jackie Kennedy could not have been more gracious to make her realize that she had committed the faux pas of faux pas. (laughs) So basically. (laughs) Oh. Uh, The the question you should have asked uh, is, were there two gunmen? And did she see anybody else? <laughs> oh, that's a that's a controversy which can never mm-hmm. die, huh, Amit? No, no grassy, no but, uh, central vista. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not really a believer in that either. Uh, you know you me. And cons- a, you think you, the case is closed, Atish? I, I don't. Okay. Lee Harvey Oswald. That's it. <laughs> it's done. It was Ted Cruz's dad anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now you India bashing is over. You go to like, these guys. It's like you're a, you're a serial. You're a serial anti-national. So wherever you go. Well, well, he was involved though, right? Ted Cruz's father was involved in the Cuban Missile Crisis stuff. If I'm not mistaken, there was something there, wasn't there? No, I can't remember exactly. He must have been involved, but not his father. Uh, there was some. I, I thought there was something there, and then Donald Trump said something about it at some point. I, no, I think it was a National Enquirer story. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Uh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. I'm making sure of. All right. Okay, what's next? Yeah, All quick, right. uh, last one. This, Come on. Uh, the, the similar one I talked about, if you can quickly talk about it, because we have one more good question after that, is uh, Vivek Singh Rathod asks, uh, Hi, Cyrus, Ahmed, Silvery, and guest. Have you guys ever attended the Independence Day or Republic Days of other countries? And how do they stack up compared to us? How? Um, Why would you be on holiday and then say, okay, let's I don't know. See. Maybe if you're like there, unless maybe you pass I'm, by, by, there, by yeah. uh, and... I'm more a carnival person. Like I said, for me, the celebration has to have no rules. You know? Oh, you know, actually, wait, wait, wait. I think I've been in France for the 14th of July. And it's kind of wonderful, actually. Yeah. That yeah. was the parade that Trump saw. And he's like, I want a parade like this. <laughs> 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 That was the rude, and it is quite. It's quite something. It's really fantastic. So you were the brown skin guy with a backpack standing outside the Bastille, talking <laughs> exactly. into your piece with a with a pressure cooker in my backpack. Oh, oh, stop! Stop! <laughs> We've alienated everyone. We got no one left now. <laughs> 
Oops. Yeah. Okay, quick. Last one. Cool. The last one uh, comes in from Payal Tomar. You guys have already addressed this a bit, but uh, maybe we should talk about it a little more. Uh, what similarities and differences do you see between the right wing in America versus the right wing in India? To me, it seems like they're both becoming more and more similar day after day to day, day by day. With Atish hand, handle that. I think it is the same. Uh, Atish. Yeah, I think the similarities are very real. Both that sense of a heartland invaded by other people, this feeling that like if you don't sort of like support a kind of cultural icon in some way, you lose your country. Th- there are two differences that I find very striking. One is that in India, it's um, interlaced with the history of foreign occupation. So it's the the person who's like shouting down someone in New York doesn't see him as like the successor of Mughal rule and British rule and Macaulay's children and oh, this Delhi South. Well in India, it's this generational yeah, issue. <laughs> yeah, no, it's this deep historical wow. like feeling that hum se This is you know, the that very feeling. definition of goodness that you brought up. You know, it <laughs> runs deep and deep and deep. Yeah. Yeah, wow. It, 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 and, and, and the other is what we already talked about, which is that I don't mind for that voice to come up, but I don't want it to be like a tidal wave that demolishes certain barriers of law, of institutions, of like, like a, a polity, because, you know, then you're just swinging from side to side. Whereas, so we had a, basically, a, I mean, in 2016 here, a complete clean sweep. And despite that, the uh, American political reality was able to survive and in many ways get stronger. Uh, and, and I don't, I, and what I feel in India is that it's, it's, it's more flattening. It's a, more of an inundation. There's one difference I, I think, although uh, maybe wrong, uh, in India, the right wing, we have more vegetarians and left wing has more non-vegetarians. <laughs> While in America, it's reverse. It's the right wing no, about hunting I, I, and I eat more meat and the vegan I, movement is left. I have a super left wing friend who's always like screaming at me about being vegetarian. And I just, I always tell him as like, one of the things that's really spoiled it for me is the fact that it's like, in, in, in India, it's almost like a fascistic cause. Mm. And he's like, yeah, no, I don't know what to do with that. But it's true. It's like, the it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think one parallel that I would see, right, between the two is also like, you know, the development of these right-wing echo chambers. So like in terms of media uh, coverage, where in the US, Fox News, OAN, uh, Newsmax, et cetera. In India, uh, your Republic is the clear winner, but also Times Now and, uh, you know, on the English side and on the Hindi side, Oh, Hindi, all of the channels, all, uh? all, almost, almost all of the channels, all, yeah. exactly, yeah. right? But And I think that that is something that I think is part of the reason why you're seeing this kind of rise to power as well, right? These kinds of, uh, these deep echo chambers. All right, yeah. one last deep question as we say bye. This is a very long episode. People are already shooting themselves uh, to use the face. <laughs> Adish, you're in America. You've been in the West for a long time in your life. What do they call you? What's the, what's the name? How do they, they must be shortening it. Or you must be having some sort of pet name or... Short, short, shorter than Atish. So there's nothing like Ats or Atty. Or... <laughs> <laughs> because it, it would be a tough name on the tongue, I would think. For them. They just go with Paki. <laughs> <laughs> loved in India, loved in America, loved in Paris on National Day, loved in the South, in Madras, loved by veg, non veg, loved by vegans. The one and only Atish Dasi. Thank you so much for being on the show. Really great fun talking to you. Uh, I can't believe that you've been stopped from entering any country in the world. I think you should be allowed <laughs> first amongst all. Thank uh, you. This is great to speak. A lot to of respect, a lot of respect, and lovely painting. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Speak soon. Cheers. Bye. See you guys. Ciao. Thanks so much, man. This was great. Amit, I'll just come oh, back in two yeah. minutes. Uh, this is already left. He's Atish left. If you want to shut, we can shut only. You want to do the ad? No, just give me two minutes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah the ad. Okay.